Welcome to Car Sales Talk 101, where it's all about life in the car business. Telling you like it is. Here's the man with the plan, Terry Cameron. Let's get started. Welcome to Car Sales Talk 101. Formerly known as the 10-Minute Car Sales Talk Podcast, I'm Terry Cameron. People have asked me why I wanted to change the name to the Car Sales Talk 101 name, especially with the number of subscribers that we already have. Well, the main reason is because I want more subscribers and it's a little bit easier to find the show if I lead with Car Sales Talk and not 10-Minute Car Sales Talk. So that's it. No other reason. So let's get started. A couple of weeks ago, I was working uh, what I call a marathon deal with one of my salespeople. Now, a marathon deal is one that starts at 9.15 in the morning and doesn't finish till 7.15 at night. One of those long, drawn-out ones. And those are usually the ones that our senior salespeople just won't put up with. They'd kick that customer to the curb right off the bat if they knew it was going to take that long. And I remember when I was working this deal, it brought back memories from several years ago when I was a finance manager working a car deal. And I looked at all the information, the numbers, the credit, the LTV, the DTI, the PTI, everything. Looked at it, at it all. And being as smart as I am, I knew it was not a deal. And we all know that when sales managers make a decision, they're usually right 100% of the time. Right? Nope, not even close. So I took this deal, told the sales customer or the salesperson that there's no way this is going to happen. Maybe I, I, as soon as I get a chance, I'll work on it. But I doubt if anything's going to happen. And that salesperson looked at me a little disappointed, but knew that I was the expert and believed what I said. Let the customer leave. Well, the next day, that customer showed up at our lot with a new car to show it to their salesperson. Not to show it off, just that they were so happy they were able to get the car. And I felt terrible because I didn't submit that deal till the next morning. Just before that customer showed up and the computer approved the deal. I never did tell that salesperson, but it was my fault that that deal did not get done. I made the decision. I decided that it was not worth the time. There's no way this deal was going to happen. And when it did happen somewhere else, I realized that I took some money out of that salesperson's pocket, some food off of their, his family's table. And it made me feel really bad. From that point forward, I decided I was no longer going to make the decision. I was going to let the bank make the call. And in my time in the car business, I've seen some crazy callbacks. Some of them, it's just because the, the buyer was a little pissed off and it might have been their last day at the at the bank and they decided to go ahead and approve everything and they hit that big A button for me a couple times. And sometimes they make mistakes. Or because our look to book is so good with that bank, they took an, a little bit more of a chance on that deal. So I never, ever made that decision anymore. I made sure every deal that was submitted to the desk, to the finance, was sent to the bank for them to make the decision. Besides, the salesperson did all that work. They spent hours, sometimes the entire day, working with this customer. Sometimes it's taken days, even weeks, to get them to commit. And then we finally get to submit the deal. We look at it, don't think it's worthy, and put it at the bottom of the pile. Well, no more. I stopped doing that. And because of that, I've seen a lot more deals happen. So this deal that I was talking about, the marathon deal I was working on, the the salesperson brought the, the deal to me. We looked at everything. They agreed to the numbers, but then we saw their credit. They were about $6,000 upside down, underwater, buried, whatever you want to call it. Credit was in the mid-fours. And, you know, to have a credit score in the mid-fours, you have to work really hard to get it that low. It doesn't just happen on its own. Pat yourself on the back if you got that number. You worked hard to get there. So I told the salesperson, you know, I really don't think this is going to happen. We're going to submit it, but I really don't think this is going to happen. And he looked at me like he, I just told him that his dog just got run over by a car. I had to reassure him that I was going to give it 100% of my effort. And while I was submitting the deal, before I could hit the submit button, the salesperson came up with an idea that I should have came up with. And that was, hey, what if we have a cosigner? What if his dad will cosign? His dad said he has excellent credit. Now, why didn't I think of that? And sales managers, I'm asking you that same question. Finance managers, I'm asking you that same question. Why don't you think of that? It's because we get so wrapped up in everything else we're doing, and we get so 
uh, big on ourselves, thinking that we know everything, that this deal's not going to happen. We're just not going to uh, work real hard on that. Let me get that 700 credit score, and let me work on that one. We think we know everything, and we don't. In one of my uh, previous episodes, I talk about it. It's not what you don't know that'll hurt you. It's what you don't know that you don't know that'll hurt you. Give it 100%, just like you're asking your salespeople. 100% of the process to 100% of the people, 100% of the time. Well, needless to say, we got dad's uh, information, and he was just about as bad as his son. Terrible. That wasn't going to happen either. But you know what? I was going to submit it anyway. About that time, the salesperson says, hold on. His mom says she has perfect credit and she'll co-sign, but she won't be here for about another hour and a half. She had to finish her uh, shopping at the mall. So we put it on hold for about an hour and a half. My salesperson was so confident that this deal was going to happen, he went over the delivery, went over everything on on the car with this customer. All along, I'm thinking, what a waste of time. What a waste of time. He could be out there finding a better customer. But I promised that I would work it. Lo and behold, mom shows up. A 780 credit score, three paid, perfectly paid card uh, counts on her credit, and we submit it, and it's approved. Not only is it approved, it's approved at a much better interest rate than we could have ever guessed. Well, that salesperson got paid that day, and he deserved every penny that he got because he worked, he didn't give up, and he did, and and he followed my rule of 100% of the process to 100% of the people 100% of the time. Now, I agree at some point in time, a deal is either a deal or not a deal, but we can't make that decision. You know, we're experts at different things, desking deals, TO and customers, appraising cars, but the banks are the experts at approving deals. Let them make the call. I promise, if you do this, you'll sell more cars, but even more importantly, you'll gain more confidence from your salespeople. They'll feel so much better knowing that when they hand you a deal, that you're going to give it 100% just like you asked them. So don't forget, the bank is the expert. We're the expert at desking that deal, closing the customer, getting the steps, everything else, but they make that decision. Now, before I go, I just want to remind you to hop, hop on over to Apple iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever it may be, or any, pot, any uh, platform that you listen to. Make sure you look for Car Sales Talk 101 and share this with a friend. One thing that's not changed this year is my motto, the sky is the limit. I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Please rate it and write a review on Apple Podcast. We appreciate your valuable feedback. You can email Terry at 10minutesalestalk at hot.rr.com. And don't forget to share the show with a friend. 